Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and you may have watched my recent videos where I worked on the Essex hot air engine. Go back and watch those if you have not already. But I really have been into hot air Stirling cycle engines for quite a few years, 25 years probably, and made quite a few of them in, uh, well, when I was in my prime is what it was. So uh, let's take a look at just a few more engines. And here they are. There's about 10 of them, and I made all of them myself, excluding this little one and this Empire engine I did not make. But the rest I did, and there's videos on several of these, so I'll put in the description below the playlist for my antique engines if you want to check those out. Now, I will be selling most, if not all, of these on Pete Bay in a fairly near future as I clean house here. I've lost interest in them a little bit, and this is really a niche. There are very few people in the whole world that have any interest or know anything about hot air engines because it's, well, it's a niche within a niche within a niche, really. So, And I understand that. I don't care about different kinds of golf clubs, so, so there you go. <laughs> All right, let's have a closer look at these. I might even run some. If not, look in the playlist if you want to see some of those run. All right. Okay, let's start with this little hot air engine here. I think you can buy these at the dime store even. And it will run on a hot cup of coffee or a blob of snow. Rather delicate. Small children would break it immediately. You can see there are some bends there but they won't burn themselves other, on, other than the hot cup of coffee. So you can see that's the power piston right there. And the actual displacer is this piece of foam, styrofoam. Kind of interesting if you want to know what all of the uh, characteristics of a hot air Stirling engine are. Lots of good books on this too. All right, let me talk a little bit about these three engines. And I made many, many more than what you see of this design. And I essentially copied that design from this. And I own several of these. These are commercially available. And I guess I don't have it anymore. But that's where I got the inspiration, if you will. Made the patterns, castings, and all of that. And I made some of these in water-cooled, but those are long gone. These are air-cooled. I also made some with cooling fins on them. And they run quite well. This is the power piston. This is the displacer. And I made some of these with castings and patterns that I used on my steam engines. That's why there is a, <clears throat> a well here for flywheel, so never mind that. But in the variations here, notice that this uses a regular crank as does this. I was on a kick there for a while where I did some painting. I don't like doing it though. But this one, first of all, is elevated just a little bit on this block of scrap wood here so that I had room under here for the, the torch or the flame or whatever it was I was using. But this one uses a scotch yoke here instead of a regular crank. They run about equally well. I didn't seem to improve it or hurt it. Just a variation in design. Scotch yoke. Leave comments if you want. I always found that the larger the engines are, the better they run. The small ones are finicky. So this is basically the same design as this, but enlarged slightly. And I made these also in water-cooled. Well, this is water-cooled. There's the inlet and the outlet. And there's a piece of copper tubing, if I recall coiled up and I poured the aluminum around that so this end gets cooled. It runs great. If you got water cooling they just run great. Yeah I made that one like what 11 years ago? No. 20 years ago. I was in my prime. I don't like the looks of these flywheels. 
I like a spoked flywheel. Anyway, there's two of those. I don't remember what I did with the other. I probably sold them on Pete Bay or the engine show or something. I really don't know. Alright, let's move on. You can see the comparison of size here. This is a lead flywheel, by the way. I use those on a lot of my engines. Here's a design that I came up with on my own. You can see how everything's getting rusty here in the basement. That's why I got to get rid of this stuff. But it's basically the same as this. That is, the displacer and some of the parts are the same. The castings are a little bit different, but of course the general principle is identical. And I call this the over and under. And it's got a scotch yoke. I think I made them without a scotch yoke too. And uh, the, the gears I got from McMaster Car or someplace. So I liked the action of this real well and they just run great. I guess the reason I did this, I wanted more I'm thinking now, years ago, I wanted more distance right here so I could put the flame under here, the sterno or whatever it was I was using. I used a lot of different heat sources. You can see that this one is about the same. Sometimes I made minor changes. Now the actual displacer that is in this tube on all of the engines that are this size was a magic marker canister. Now they made them out of metal, remember that? So it was about this size, only the kind that actually said magic marker on them. So inside of this steel tube is an aluminum hollow tube that goes back and forth. You can see that that's about the right size. I don't want to get too much into the theory of how these run. That's covered in many, many other videos. Many years ago there was an engine called a Robinson engine, so this is basically a copy of a Robinson. I made the pattern so it scaled way down. The, the Robinson was much bigger than this. This, oh shoot, I made that in 98, the year I retired from teaching. This is water cooled, which means it just runs great, and the heat source goes under here. But I, I love the action of this. fun to watch run. Now you can run them without water for a short period of time but then the whole thing heats up and it stops. Just plain stops on you. That's one of my favorites. I already said that. This is also one of my favorites. It's like picking your favorite child, you know. And this one is made, it's a model of a Heinrich, Heinrich, or Heinrichy, I forgot. So it's water cooled also. There's the inlet and the outlets over on the other side. You can't see it. The wheels are cast out of zinc. Aluminum was too light, so I made them out of zinc. This is the power piston. And if you look underneath, that's where we put the flame onto the displacer. I made this in 99 it says right here. Some castings but some just plain fabricated pieces of steel welded together. That's right in the way. And this is an Empire engine. I've got a bunch of the Empire steam engines. Same company. And I remember a man gave this to me and it was not working and I made a several part video. I'm not sure how many parts. Rebuilding it and I turned it into a water cool. That's what this copper tubing is all about. And it runs quite well. Look at that video if you're in the mood. Cast iron base. They were very well built engines. 
As you can see, I had to make a bunch of parts for it. Okay, I got it preheating. This is alcohol. It's a sterno can, but it's denatured alcohol in there. Be careful with that. Not for kids. Preheated it for, I don't know, it was only about 30 seconds, I think. This one has ball bearings. Two ball bearings. One on the upper shaft, one on the lower shelf. They'll run for a while on the residual heat. Let's run this side by side. It's been preheated for 45 seconds. Now they'll run in either direction if you change the timing. But this one's time to go in that direction. Notice it's picking up a little speed as it gets hotter. Sadly, children will have no interest at all in this. They would rather play a video game or they would rather actually watch someone else play a video game than play around with this foolishness. Well, that concludes this little show and tell with my Sterling Hot Air Engines. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're so inclined, give me a thumbs up. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now and I'll see you next time.